So let's go over remote access software, not just any remote access software, but one that can be used to demo things, to share your screen, to go ahead and remote view another screen. You can use this in so many applications. You can even just use it for remote control and rebooting and powering off machines. It's amazing. And the best part about this software is it's completely free and it's completely open source. So you never have to worry about it just getting locked behind some kind of paywall once you hit some threshold. And uh, I, the thing I love probably most about it is its security features. It has password authentication and it also has key-based authentication, which is a huge thing. Uh, when I see so many people using like Zoom, which has so many security flaws and uh, you know it's had issues where it gave root-based authentication to uh, a lot of hackers and also it shares a lot of credentials so many vulnerabilities with zoom I mean heck even Linus Tech Tips mentioned how bad zoom was and then uh, my kids are actually using Google classrooms right now for their schooling and I find it very lackluster and it's kind of surprising Google put su out such a bad product in that regard so uh, with that let's get into Veon the remote classroom software that is amazing and I just use it for my personal use for remote access and just rebooting my PCs here but so many feature sets, so uh, let's get into it. Before we get into the video, I do live stream over on Twitch both Monday and Friday. Uh, so if you'd like to ask a question, head over there, ask me live, or you can check out all the archives of all my past streams over on Chris Titus Tech Streams. The links are in the description. So with that, let's get into our video. All right, so here is the base Veon Master. I already have three PCs set up. I have my stream PC, which you can actually see a preview of what's going on on that PC. But if we wanted to go full screen, we're gonna get the inception effect, but I'm gonna just show you a remote view. You can see all the, the stuff that's happening here. It's actually recording my screen and <laughs> doing an inception effect because this is my actual broadcasting software. I can even go from here, go full screen with this one. I can go full screen or I can just go to remote control because right now it's just viewing, you know, my, my actual end uh, on my stream PC. It doesn't even show that I'm remoted in as it's just viewing. Now, remote control, obviously, I can use keyboard and mouse and other things, but we're not going to do that. We'll just hit exit. I wanted to just kind of show what you're seeing here in this. This is my inside uh, main PC that I do some gaming and other things on. And then this is the studio PC, which we're currently on. So let's add some more. I have a remote stream Windows-based PC we're going to add. And then I also have an Arch-based KDE that I just kind of use as a test box that we're going to add. So let's start with that um, and go over the configuration. Now on the master, uh, I'll start with the, the actual configuration here by launching Veon Configurator. The Veon Configurator, as you see, uh, has some cool settings. The biggest thing is right here going from logon authentication to key file authentication. Do this. Who wants to put in a password that's not even that secure? Uh, key, key file authentication is my go-to. For services, I just make sure it's started and this is going, and then you pick a VNC service. Typically, everyone already has this installed and it kind of installs it by default as you go through and install your Veyon. So uh, just make sure that there's something here and it's not blank and your state is running and that is good to go now if you're on linux uh when i go to through the install process i'll show you how to make sure this service is running all the time so next up we'll skip master as there's nothing i change here access control i don't change anything here authentication keys i have a private and public key on my master box now the big thing here is the public key is what we need to put on all the other boxes we're remoting into we just basically say export key, and then we just say, okay, here we go. We'll put it in the root directory and hit save. This exports that key out, and then I can just copy that key onto a thumb drive, and away I go. So very simple to export the public key, which you should be doing key-based authentication, I think, for everybody, but that's just me. And then locations, hit the plus sign. I name mine home, and then once I did that, I add all my PCs with the plus sign over here which we're gonna do real fast. So 
Let's start with the Windows PC and remote streaming and add that to our Veyon master after we're finished. So we're gonna go over to the Windows PC. So I just went ahead and copied the home public key.pem file to my desktop, so that's there. And now we need to download the actual thing. Now what I could do if you're doing this for like 20 in a whole classroom setup or, or whatever it is, or an email, you could email this file. Um, either way, uh, let's go ahead and launch into the web browser and download Veyon from their website. And if you go to veyon.io forward slash download, here's what you get. Very simplistic download screen, or you just go veyon.io and click download. You have all the Windows setup files. You have Linux, which should ha supports Debian Stretch and Buster, which is Debian 9 and 10 respectively, Ubuntu 16, Ubuntu 18, and uh, OpenSUSE 15, Fedora, and CentOS. So pretty much everybody's on here. I'm choosing Arch today because it's not on the list and uh, it's even simpler to install under Arch for the Linux box. So if you are on either one of these, just know you can click this and then just run the DEB file it downloads or the RPM file if you're on OpenSUSE or Fedora. But for Windows, we're just gonna grab the 64-bit file. It'll download real quick. We'll run it. It's only 11 megs, so pretty lightweight. And since this is the box we'd remote into and we're not running master and we only have the public key, I'll show you how to set this up. So this is what you would do for all of the client PCs that you remote into or be viewing. So uncheck master, we have the service and driver. We'll just hit install. And with that, we'll hit finish. It auto launches the configurator. We'll just go key-based authentication, the service. We just make sure that's running. It is VNC server. Just put the built-in master, leave alone. Access control, leave alone. Authentication keys, we'll import that key, which we put on our desktop. Now you can put this on a thumb drive, obviously. Just download the files you need, both the installation and the, the public file. It make it very easy when doing multiples. So we'll go ahead, import that in. Import was successful. Access group says administrators. Um, I would go ahead and probably just set this to users and say, okay. And uh, it, why I set that to users is users typically have a lower level privilege. Uh, should you remote in and you want like the person running the thing to be able to install programs and things like that, you probably would leave this ad, ad, as administrators, but um, it just depends on what you want. I, I'll go ahead and leave it for administrators for today's video. I just want to show the differences between uh, those groups. So next we just need to add the actual location, which is home. And then we just add this computer. Uh, I recommend getting the host name and the IP address. I set static IP addresses for everything just in case I have DNS issues. Uh, I never have an issue. So we'll just go ahead, put CMD. Host name is called GameStream-PC, capital G, capital S, capital PC. And then uh, we also need the IP address. So the IP address can change. So you might not put this if you're not running static. However, I set static and hardwire all my systems as I don't want any network issues at all. So I make it kind of simple. So we'll go new PC and we're just gonna put that game stream dash PC in. And then we add the IP as well as this is a static IP address. And we just hit apply. And yes, now if you were deploying this to like thousands of computers, you could also do LDAP and deploy this through a whole host of different ways. But uh, for today's video, I just wanna show the simplistic way. So with that done, we're pretty much finished with the configuration of this. So we can add GameStream PC to our Veyon master. So let's flip back to our Linux box, which are, has our master running. It could also run on a Windows box, it doesn't matter. Under the Veyon configuration over here, we'll just go ahead and add this PC, which was game stream PC. And we'll add the IP address of 16. All right, we'll relaunch master, click locations and computers. You'll see we now have game stream PC, so we'll check that. All right, with game stream PC up, you can see the desktop now, it's all in the preview window. So again, we can do remote view, and for this one, let's go ahead and go full screen with it. And now we have this. Now it's just remote view, so we can't really click on anything. So we'll go ahead, click on remote control, 
And now we can actually click on the start menu and do things on that computer through full remote control. So let's exit this. But even better is we can actually send reboot commands directly to this game stream PC. So let's go ahead. All right, well, that was fun. Uh, these commands up here, I didn't realize, even if you have something selected and you press these, it's gonna send a power down command to every single computer, or it's gonna send a reboot command like I just did to every single computer and <laughs> reboot everything. So uh, be careful with these top commands as I did not realize that. Uh, but still, you can send a reboot command directly to this PC, like the game stream PC, let's go ahead and send it a reboot. And you can actually see that actually knocked it offline and uh, went ahead and sent it into reboot mode, which is kind of cool. So this is emulating a reboot. So to finish this out, let's add this to an Arch-based system and configure it just like we did the other one. The, the process is almost identical. I just wanted to show the Arch install as I think it's a little bit easier than Windows or uh, Debian and Ubuntu, so. All right, now that we're back on the Arch system here, this is the Arch KDE system that doesn't have anything really loaded. We're gonna just launch into terminal. From terminal, we're just gonna go yay, s, vayon. Now, the, this system actually builds the entire program, so it does take a little bit longer than downloading the binaries directly off the website, but it still works very well. All right, now Veyon is installed on this arch base system or arch Linux system, so we'll close out of this and we should be able to just see it in our start menu. So we'll just go Veyon and there's the configurator and master. We wanna run the configurator first. Uh, obviously we don't need the master on this system, so uh, we just leave that off. We'll just go key based authentication, apply, uh, service. We'll go ahead and choose the plugin. I'm not gonna start the service yet because I wanna show how to enable this by default on a Linux system. Authentication keys, we're gonna import that public key. I think I have it in my home downloads folder. There it is, we'll just go ahead and open that. Now access root is root there, so <laughs> you definitely watch that access group. If you have issues with this, set it to your user as this would give the person remoting into the computer root level access. So really important to notate that. We'll add our home location and then we'll just get this computer name and add that as well. So Terminator, host name, Arch Linux. And then we'll just grab the IP as well. IP is gonna be 69.227. So this one is not a static IP. So I, for today's video, I'm just gonna add it um, as Arch Linux, but I might have another PC name this. So I, I, I'll leave the actual host name. Let's see what happens with that. So we'll hit apply. Um, that's pretty much done, but as we saw the service was not running. So let's go ahead, start the Veyon system with system control, start Veyon. And that starts the Veyon process. So. If we wanna make sure this launches every time the system is up, we'll just enable Veyon. This enables it. So uh, to check the status, obviously, we'll do that last status Veyon and it should be operational. And sure enough, it is. So from here, we can quit out. Uh, we'll go ahead, just pop on over to here and we're gonna go ahead and reload our Veyon master after reconfiguring it. So we'll add this next one. We'll go Veyon configurator. And from here, we'll come down to location group. And this is where we'll add Arch Linux. So uh, we'll leave off uh, the actual host address, but let's see what happens. Go ahead and hit yes. From here, let's go ahead and ping Arch Linux just to see if it his pulls in that uh, 227 one. So Arch Linux does not have an address associated with it. Uh, so obviously this would not work unless we do put a host address. So this is how you would check on the master to see if you need to add the host address. Just ping the host name. If it's not able to resolve the host name, you have a couple options. We could add it to the host file on this system or just simply put it in the host address here, which we'll just do it in the host address for today's video. Uh, do not make it too complex. So 227 should get us there. We'll hit apply to this configuration. Yes, quit out. 
and then just launch the Veyon Master again, and we should have that new system. So if we go to Locations and Computers, go to Home, go to Arch Linux, should pull in that one, and sure enough, there it is. So we'll just do a quick remote view, see if it pulls it up, and sure enough, there it is. So we'll exit that, and uh, you know what? Let's just go ahead and send this a power down command. Power down now. You even have the option to choose updates or not if you want to. So with that, it turned off that PC, and it's done. So I thought this was kind of a cool way to do it. One last thing I want to leave you with, though, is uh, just a simple demo mode. You can actually take this. Uh, oh, actually, when I did window demo with the top one, it pushed the window demo to every single PC in existence. So I just noticed on my stream PC, it did that. Remember, everything up here pushes these commands to all the PCs. So if you have 10 PCs up, you hit power down, reboot or window demo, it'll send it to every PC that you have listed or checked in your locations and computers. So very powerful. But if we wanna just do a simple window demo to here, just right click, say window demo, and it'll actually cast this to that demo, which is kind of, kind of neat. And to stop the demo, uh, we can just hit stop demo just as easily as we started it. So very neat things all the way around, awesome software. And that's it. That is the full virtual classroom remote control. You can do demos, you can do screen sharing, you can do just anything and everything, all open source, all free, no limits. And the probably the most powerful thing that's so unique about this when it comes to a virtual classroom is when I click those universal buttons at the top and it just casts all of those commands, whether it's a file transfer, whether it's a reboot command, whether it's just a simple demo, which is probably the most powerful, where I can screencast mine one screen to a whole host of computers all at once with no limits, which is uh, truly amazing. But with that, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. And as always, thank you to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one.